Welcome, my friends, to this, the, the last week of June, as we have gathered together to be in honor and glory to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My friends, as we gather together, we give our hearts over in praise. And so whatever you may be doing, let us stop and center ourselves on the Lord and focus our heart's attention on him. Would you join me in the call to worship? Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, my great Redeemer's praise. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. All creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing. Oh, praise ye. All praise to thee, for thou, O King divine, may our song of praise rise to you this day. Friends, let our song of praise rise to God as we sing together all glory, laud, and honor, shall we sing. All glory, laud, and honor, to the Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. Thou art the King of Israel, thou David's royal son, who in the Lord's name comest, the King and blessed one all glory lord and honor to the redeemer king to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring the company of angels are praising the reply all glory lord and honor to the redeemer king to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring the people of the hebrews with palms before the before thee we present all glory lord and honor to the redeemer king to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring to join me in an attitude of prayer. Lord, we do want to bring before you our praise and our prayers this day. 
And we ask, O oh Lord, that our prayers flow from a place of recognizing who you are, O oh Lord, that you alone are God, and that our prayers come from a place of following the spirits leading in our hearts and in our lives. Lord, you do deserve all glory, laud, and honor. And so we offer it to you, not just in this service, but every single day of our lives. It is in your name that we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Friends, we're continuing on looking at the Psalms this day, and we're actually going to the last Psalm, Psalm 150, which talks about what it looks like to be a person of praise. Now, I know you'll say, Michelle, we all already talked about praise. We already talked about Thanksgiving, but my friends, there is always more to dwell on when it comes to praising God. In fact, the psalmist reminds us that we are a bit lackluster in our praise, that there are times that we are not as joyous and jubilant as we should be at the foot of the cross. And so, my friends, would you join me this day in the prayer of confession as we lay down our hesitancy, hesitancy to praise and picking up the joy of the Lord. And we pray together saying, Lord Jesus, we confess that sometimes we hold back our praise. We act as if you need to earn our shouts of joy when really you are the one who deserves all praise, glory, and honor. We confess that we've become more worried about how we will look to other people than what it means to be faithful to you. Forgive us, Lord and set us back on the right path, we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I invite you to hear the good news, which is this. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Praise be to God. And now, my friends, as joyful people, let us affirm the foundation of our faith as we say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. There are certain times of the year, more than others, when we think about what we are thankful for. Around November, right, when we celebrate Thanksgiving, that's a big one, or around Christmas time. But we're to be thankful all the time. And so I wonder, what are some of the things that you are thankful for? Well, most people would say, what, family, friends, food, water, shelter. But can I tell you what I'm thankful for today? I want you to close your eyes. Take a big deep breath in, let it out. I'm thankful, my friends, for the breath of life. I'm thankful for this life that I have, the life that you have. And because we have this wonderful and precious life, we are to praise God with it. So it's not just about what we are thankful for, it's about living in a way that honors God. God, who is the creator of all, including us. And so as you go about your week and 
You catch yourself breathing. Maybe that's a reminder to you to live your life as a life of praise. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we know that we are to be thankful, and yet sometimes, God, we don't act like it. We know that we are to live like people who honor you, and sometimes we struggle with that as well. And so, Lord, give us gentle reminders throughout the week to stop, to catch our breath, and to praise you. Not to just to thank you for the good things that we have, although they are many, but also, Lord, to thank you with the way that we live our lives. So, Lord, use us, we pray. Amen. As I said, we are jumping now to the end of the Psalm, Psalm 150, the absolute last one. And I invite you to either turn there in your particular Bible or to just center yourself to hear and receive these words. Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise God in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his surpassing greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipes. Praise him with clashing cymbals. Praise him with clanging cymbals. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, as we continue on in your word this day, looking at the ancient prayers and songs of faith, we do ask, O oh Lord, that you remind us that we don't just praise you with what we say, but with how we live. And Lord, may this be an invitation for us to examine our hearts, examine our lives, and seek to follow you every single day. It is in your most mighty name that we pray. Amen. Some of my favorite hymns that I grew up singing in church were ones that praised God. In fact, we had the, the lines of praise from some of those songs as part of our call to worship this day. But there are actually hundreds, hundreds, my friends, of hymns that contain the word praise in them. And the praise of these hymns, it's always directed at God, Christ, and the Holy Spirit. The psalmist who penned Psalm 150 knew something about praising God. In fact, the, the praise that he presented to God, I would say, was pure praise, which is a, a bit of an odd statement, right? Isn't all praise pure? And yet I say pure praise because he had no intention other than lifting high the name of God. I want you to think back over the last several weeks as we've been on this journey through the Psalms together. And often even Psalms of praise, like the Psalm that we started out with, Psalm 100, talk about God defeating enemies or bringing vindication or offering a just judgment. But that's not what we find here. Here in Psalm 150, we find praises for who God is, not what God has done. Now, I know in many ways, it seems hard to separate the two, right? Often when we think of God's goodness, God's grace, we think that God's actions flow from God's character, which is 100% true. But also, if we think of God as no one else than someone who seeks to serve us, someone who gives us our desires, our wants, then we've reduced God to one who exists only to answer our wish list, which is not true in scripture at all. So who is God and why do we praise him? 
Well, first, God is creator. The truth is, at times, we like to act like human beings are the ultimate creators. But we need to go back then to the beginning of the Bible, to the book of Genesis. In fact, at the very beginning of the book of Genesis, and be reminded that it is God who has created us. In fact, God created everything, the seas, the skies, the stars, the heavens, the sun, the moon, all the animals and plants that we would be able to call to mind. And then in a final act, God took the very dust of the ground and breathed life into it. And human beings were created. On Wednesdays, I join with a group of sisters from around the United States, and we read together psalms and we pray for one another. And to begin that time, we often just sit in silence while someone speaks over us these words of truth. That the word for breath in both the Hebrew and Greek languages, the languages found in scripture, ruach and pneuma, actually mean spirit. It is the spirit of God with blood, which blessed us with the breath of life. And each day that we are blessed to draw more breath into our lungs, we can praise the Lord. But God didn't stop there. As we are reminded every time we come to the, the table of Holy Communion, that we as human beings, sometimes we screw up. A lot of the times we screw up. We choose our own path of sin and destruction over and above the path that God has called us to obediently follow. And as a result, we have a broken relationship with God and, and often a broken relationship with others. But even with that being the truth of who we are, God never, ever gives up on us. Instead, God kept trying to call us back home, back to the way of life. And God offered teaching, God offered wisdom, God offered guidance through the Holy Spirit's leading. And when we weren't willing to listen to the Holy Spirit, then God sent the prophets. And when we wouldn't listen to the prophets, then mercy and salvation came to us through Jesus Christ, who came to capture the attention of our hearts. Grace and compassion and care in times of trouble mercy and grace and a path to life again and the abiding presence of our savior with us every day this is part of all of what god offers to us another way to say it is god my friends is as close as our next breath and the next beat of our heart and so of course those are all things that we could and should praise god for but there's even more to praise god for than that my friends in fact there's more to praise god for than what we could capture in words so why do we praise god for the psalmist says that we are to jump with joy that seems pretty self-explanatory the psalmist is saying we are to praise God because God is God. We are to have joy in the presence of the Lord, and that is reason enough. Everything else that we have been blessed with, well, my friends, that is just additional. We are to be in the presence of our loving and holy God as people of praise, as people of thanksgiving. In fact, that praise of God isn't just limited when we are blessed in life, though we are mightily blessed, because there may be times when there are given moments when we don't feel like praising God, when to the outside eye or inside of our hearts, we feel like things aren't going the way that we should. But it's not a praise that is contained to an attitude or an action or even a specific place. What does the psalmist say? Praise God in his holy temple. Praise God in the mighty heavens. So where are we to praise God? When are we to praise God? Anywhere and everywhere. 
Praise him in the house of God. Praise him where two or three are gathered. Praise him around the dinner table as you break bread. Praise him in the car. Praise him at your desk. Praise him in the yard. Praise be to our God. Praise him, yes, because of his mighty deeds, but praise God above all because he is greater than anyone that we will ever know. Remember, friends, that these 150 psalms that we've been dwelling in, they were the songs of ancient Israel. They were the prayers that Jesus would have prayed in the temple and in his home. And because this is the last one, and it calls us to remember the mighty deeds of God, guess what? That's asking us to remember all 149 other psalms and to allow them to bear testimony to the goodness of God in all times and in all places. The God who can bring us through the fire and the flame, God who has offered us guidance. And so it's not just about praising God for what God has done in your life, though that is wonderful and great, but it's about the magnitude of God who has come and shown us again and again and again through scripture, his power and might. See, God is worthy of incomparable praise because God has shown us love and mercy in incomparable ways. Even in the worst of worst days, brothers and sisters, you are still loved as a child of God, and therefore you can offer up a song of praise. And so really, that's what this closing hymn, this closing psalm is, an invitation to praise God again and again and again, and to let his praise not just be on our lips, but being a guiding force in our lives. In fact, praise of God is how the ancient Israelites told both of God's faithfulness towards them and expressed their faithfulness towards God. Every day I take time and I pray through some of the Psalms. Sometimes I pray with other people, sometimes on my own, but there are certain Psalms that will come up again and again and again. And recently I was talking with one of the sisters I am blessed to pray with one of these Psalm prayers. And she noted that we lose something when we don't return to these, the prayers of Jesus. But she also says that we equally lose something if we don't figure out how to speak their truth in a language that connects with hearts and lives today. See, for the ancient Israelites, this was their language that they were familiar with. The ancient language that defined them and their relationship to a holy God. But it has to ask us the question, what is our language today? What does it look like for us to be people of praise today? What does our language do in expressing our faith? And how do our daily existences, our daily lives help to guide us as a people of praise? Now, I want to be very clear about what I'm saying here. I want you to think about how you are a person of praise and think about how this psalm may be true in your life today, because I wanted to speak to how it connects your heart to God and how God may be then possibly using your posture of praise to speak truth into the lives of other people. But we don't use our praise in order to control other people. Just like we don't use our praise to try to manipulate and control God. Whether it's inviting us to look into our lives and see how our language and behavior connects in a way that bears testimony to God's name. Take a moment and just close your eyes. When I say the word praise, what are some of the images, the words that come to you? What images do you have of praising God? Go ahead and open your eyes. I hope it's something that came to mind. For some, it may be shouting with joy or lifting holy hands or singing praise songs and hymns of faith. And those are all valid and true, my friends. 
For when we praise, we come and set aside ourselves in order to just express our love for God. And this psalm, Psalm 150 in particular, is such a wonderful example of praising God by asking nothing of God. Praise for the psalmist is simply coming before God and praising God out of adoration. I still remember the time, the first time that I ever was led to lift up holy hands in worship. I was just so moved by the spirit as we were singing a particular praise chorus at college that I couldn't help it. In fact, it felt like my arms were just moving on their own. It was how my body desired to express what I was feeling in my heart. I have other colleagues who praise God by taking off their shoes in the sanctuary in the house of God because they are standing on holy ground. And I know other colleagues who dance and sway or even play the tambourine. Friends, how we praise God isn't about what others think about our praise. It's simply allowing our hearts to respond to God's grace and goodness in our lives in whatever way the Spirit moves us, in whatever way the Spirit moves you. And worship, true worship that comes from the heart, friends, that is pleasing to our God. And so how is God inviting you to be a person of praise through this particular psalm? And what do you need to, to set aside or let go of in order to be attentive to praising God for simply who he is? Let us take time to dwell in these questions this week. Let us take time to allow God to examine our hearts and let us above all take time to be people of praise. Amen. Friends, as we turn to a time of corporate prayer together, know that it's not just a time to, to share our concerns, though you are certainly welcome to bring them if that is what is on your heart this day. But it's also a time to bring our praise, to tell of God's goodness in your life. And so my friends, whatever you have to share this day, whatever is bubbling up inside of you, let us bring it together to the Lord. Lord Jesus, as we come as a people of prayer today, we know that prayer and praise are woven together in your word in ways that are unlinkable, that, oh Lord, they are so stuck together that they cannot be separated. And so, Lord Jesus, let our prayers that we bring today be ones of praise like the psalmist long ago. Oh Lord, stir in our hearts. Remind us, O oh Lord, of just the fact that you are God, and let us that to bring us to our knees. Lord, it is because you are God that we know that you are good, and that your ways endure, and that you, O oh Lord, desire for us the path that leads to life. And so, Lord, for all of those that we know this day that are struggling with things that take away from life, we bring them before your throne. For those struggling, oh Lord, with addictions, with broken relationships, for with secrets that are holding them captive, we hand them to you. For all, Lord, who say that they follow you but cannot bring themselves to be a people of praise, we ask, oh Lord, that you renew their spirit in their hearts. For those, O oh Lord, who are feeling defeated or a lack of encouragement in their life, may you whisper the truth that they are yours again and again and again. And for those, Lord Jesus, who feel lonely, may you remind them, O oh Lord, that you are always with them, both in presence and in the body of Christ. And O oh Lord, we ask that you use us as your body to bear witness to your truth of the good news of the gospel as we come together and pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. So we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we come and enter into a time of offering, know that all that we have said and done in this service is an offering to God. And know that the way that you live your life, that is an offering to God as well. So would you join me in dedicating all that you have and all that you are to our Lord and Savior. As we pray together saying, God of light, send us forth to share your word, which is a lamp unto our feet. Share it with the world. Use what we offer now to illuminate the way of your kingdom, we pray. Amen. And now, my friends, as people praise, let us join together in our closing hymn, Have Thine Own Way, Lord. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me after the The only announcement I have, my friends, before I send us out with a word of blessing is that Bible study resumes this Thursday at 7.30 p.m. on Zoom. Now I send us out with these simple words. Praise the Lord. May you praise the Lord in his sanctuary. May you praise the Lord during your time of worship. May you praise the Lord with how you live your lives. May you praise the Lord. Amen and amen. <laughs>